Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 14 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In today's episode, we are going to learn all about Angular components. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to understand what are components, how to generate them, how to use them, and how they will be useful going forward as you learn, as you start your Angular application journey. This is part 11 of the series uh, before we start uh, coding. I'll request you if you have any queries, doubts, need job help, support, please write to me at surya.aradhya at gmail.com. If you like my work and tutorials, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash tutorials. This is a complete playlist that we are building. Right now we are at episode number 11. We have covered 10 episodes in this series. Uh, make sure that you go through each one of them in order to learn and master Angular 14 from scratch. Today we are learning about Angular components. So, Quick word on Angular components, a th little bit of theory um, and then we'll start coding. Angular components are the most fundamental building blocks of Angular applications. You would not see any Angular application without a component. Just like we saw that every Angular application should have at least one module which is by default, uh, the name is app module. Similarly, you'll have at least one component which does the templating and all that. We group logical components inside modules. So in the last episode, we learned about modules. So think of it this way. We talked about a module, let's say users. You will have a lot of components inside the users module, like say view a particular user, update a user details, read its de uh, update password, reset password, etc, etc, related to that particular module. Each one of that particular functionality or a feature can be categorized as a component and hence the building block of that particular module. The way we generate is we use uh, Angular CLI command ng generate component followed by the component name. There is also concept of standalone components that I'm going to cover it in the next episode. For today, let's keep it simple, basic, just to understand, get a feel of the components. Understand that we can share data between various components via input and output uh, decorators. We'll cover that again as we progress in the series. Let's get started now. Uh, deep dive into component files and details, okay? All right, so I'm opening my Visual Studio Editor. This is what we did in the last uh, episode where we learned about more modules. We created few modules like task, user, settings, and profile. All right, okay, so now um, let's go ahead and go into that folder. 14 and clear. Okay, so we are in the Angular 14 and then we go into the folder and this is where our source and app is, right? This is where we run our Angular, com uh, Angular CLI command, which is ng generate component, right? Or in short, you can write C. I've covered all these details uh, in detail also in the Angular CLI tutorial in the early playlist. Make sure you check out that. All right, so the, how do you generate a component? Angular ng generate component or sh for short you can write c followed by the name of the component right now if you see um, if you want to generate it inside a particular module the way you can do that is you can navigate to that and say you want to create inside users i am inside the users um, folder if you see here and here i'm going to say ng generate c component name okay i'm going to show you some variations of it as well. Let's start with the basic one. I'm going to say ng generate component and the component name is list users. Okay, it says it's not because I need to go back to my bash. All right, so here again, I need to quickly navigate to Angular 14 and then I will go into Arc invoice source app and then I'm going to go into users folder. I'm going to say ng generate c list users. So now important thing here that you should notice is, let me make some notes. Right. So know that components are the most uh, basic building blocks, right, of any Angular application. Now you can generate any number of 
any number of components okay there is no restriction we can generate using command ng generate component followed by component name okay that's the way to generate a component now I am showing you a variation where we are inside a module folder and generating the component okay I'll show you what happens when you don't we are near not inside the module obviously when you're not inside any module it will generate inside the app module okay so take an example here that I just did we generated a component by the name list users inside the folder users and users is nothing but it's just a module right it was just a module I created list users so it generated four files okay when we generate generate a component four files will be created okay now actually if you see here four are created one is updated file is updated I'll tell you why okay so when you say four files if you see one will be a class which is component.ts component.spec.ts is your unit testing file dot HTML is your template dot SCSS is where your you write your CSS so I'll touch base a little bit on it um, so that you guys are clear especially though if you are a beginner anything ending with component dot SCSS is style which means you write your CSS or SCSS code here okay if you see anything with dot component dot TS that's where you write your logic okay it's basically a class you can say and you implement all the logic there when you see dot spec dot ts that's here for your unit testing the component okay so all your unit tests go inside spec dot ts and finally you would have dot html which is where you write your html or template code okay so remember what these four files are about right so every component every time you generate a component these four files will be created whenever a component is created okay it would check for the nearest module okay it would check for the nearest module where you are creating this particular component in our case the nearest module it found was users.module.ts and that's why if you open users.module.ts you would see that the newly created component is already imported okay now that is by default it does okay nearest module will be updated and component will be updated okay now let me show you another variation let's say you're not inside a module now see here my path okay so right now I'm inside the source app I'm not inside any particular module but I told you if you don't specify any module the nearest module will be always be app dot module dot ts so now if I run the command ng generate C and I'm going to uh, say um, generate a component and say um, well home okay or say default home okay that that's what I want my default component to be and enter so now you see that it would make an entry and it would see more than one component module matches so you can do skip import to the closest module okay or if we already have this material module okay that's why this conflict happened if you are not having material module here you should see that it updates app dot module okay but what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify app module dot ts so that's how you specify which module to update okay so now if you see it created the four files and updated the module that we specified that is using hyphen hyphen module module name okay so the same same everything is same how you generate here if you look everything is same the only difference is now we are adding hyphen hyphen module the which module we want to add either you go to that directory or you can specify right 
here in the CLI and mention the module name. That's another way of doing it. Okay. So if you see here, now we will have a new which says default home. Okay. Again, it has the four files. I hope creation of component is clear. I hope now you can add the modules respectively to any module and map the newly created components to the modules. All right. So that is done. So what we have learned is we have learned how to create a component plus update it to a specific module. Okay. All right. So I want to cover more about standalone, which I will do it in the next episode. For today, I want to show you how this affects. Okay. Now that you created a component, but how do we see it in working? So let me fire this up first. So to, to serve, which is nothing but ng serve will build your application locally. Okay. That's how you generate. So it will generate and now it says that your application is ready on host number. 4200. So if you see here, um, our application is showing the basic structure. So which is nothing but this button here. I like and like I showed you in last time. This is a component app component is again a component just like the one that we just created. And I am going to include Okay, so if you see here now the message comes default home works. If you open the template, this is where it is. So let's change that. So all the HTMLs will be defined in your .html files, which is your template. Welcome to default home component. Right. So this is clear. Now from app component, I'm going to leave this out and this button. And instead have the default home app go at the top. Okay, so welcome to home. Just a pretty um, nothing crazy here. Just I'm showing you how you can generate a component, how you can change the template and how you can use it in app component. That's all you should know as part of beginner, as part of learning Angular component. Okay, so if you can do these three tasks today, right? So the, at the end, if you are doing practice, this is what your hands on homework is so homework is generate a component second generate a component inside a module by going into the mod into the module directory okay that's something that you should try then generate a module generate a component inside a module using cli option hyphen hyphen module fine then update the component like so what do you mean by update the component it's nothing but how do you call it okay so why did I write app default home because here in the class if you see by default everything is the app hyphen component name whatever you have given okay so if you want to change it let's say I want to just say app home that's fine you can do that as well but this will give you error. Why? Because we changed it in the selector, but we did not change it in the app component.html. So you need to make sure that wherever you're calling the component, you need to give the same component name. Okay. So that's why this is. So whatever name you mention in the selector, the same name will be the component. You will use it inside any component that you want to use. Okay. So that is the homework, uh, update the component selector name and use it in app component. If you can do this at the end of the tutorial, that means you're good. You have a good understanding of components. Try generating more components and um, get a feel of it. Get comfortable with working with components. That's all we'll cover today. In the next episode, I will be covering about the standalone components. Okay. And it's an interesting um, implementation, which would really ease up a lot of work of working with different components. And I'll show you why it's actually very helpful when you're building complex applications. So join me in the next episode. We'll go over the standalone components. Thank you so much for joining. As always, keep supporting. If you like my work and tutorials, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arctutorials.
Thank you.